Captain Sid's back. Is my hair crazy? Yeah, it looks pretty crazy. That's all right. Just piloting us through this precarious situation where we have a large kind of cargo-esque ship behind us. Some sort of tanker, Sid Comfort. And another boat over there. We're, we're trying to go more port gear, but he's he decided to kind of cross paths with us. So we're we're out of the shipping lane, so I'm mean, pretty far from the shipping lane, I believe. So I'm not sure why there's such large boats here. But alright. This will be interesting to share. <laughs> Stressful? No. no. Okay. Wind picked back up. What are we going at? About four and a half knots? Yeah. That's good. So we didn't make as far as we wanted to the first day. The wind was supposed to be a lot better in the forecast, but it really died down very fast. Um, so that's that. We should be to Solomon's Island area. Uh, within probably the next couple hours or so where we'll anchor and then continue up to Annapolis on day two. So try to get some footage of the anchoring as long as it's not too stressful an experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no yelling at me. Yeah. No yelling at me either. I never yell. <laughs> wind picked up a little bit here. The boat is trying to get over its kind of haul speed barrier where right now we're at about 6.8 knots. Um, we've touched like 7, 7.1, 7.2 but if I recall I think the haul speed's right around lower sevens. So you can feel the boat just trying to get up over that hump but it fortunately I don't think the wind's strong enough for us to do that uh, today. But it is nice, we're making some pretty good uh, progress now, going, you know, six, six and a half knots. Earlier on, of course, we were motoring and the wind was like really subpar, so we didn't make it as far as we wanted to. We were trying to get to an anchorage up a little bit more north of here, but unfortunately with the sun setting so early now at about 5 p.m., um, as well as the distance between this anchorage and the next one up north is like 17 nautical miles. So we're cutting it a little close. It's already a little past 2 p.m. Um, so I prefer just to play it safe, kind of find something here in Solomon's Island area, drop the anchor, make sure it's secure, um, and then wake up in the early morning, tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., and get moving. So that's kind of the plan, at least for now.
Well, disaster kind of struck again here. Um, we're out in the center of kind of Solomon's Island area. And I don't know what happened, but as we were coming in, I, I turned the engine on. And after about running it for probably five, six minutes, um, the cold water, or I guess the hot water alarm went off in, the, in that the engine wasn't getting enough cold water to cool itself. So um, immediately shut the engine off, ran down. I emptied the sea strainer, but it didn't really look that bad. The, uh, as you know, I turned it back on after I let it cool down for a little bit and the water was kind of getting pulled through the sea strainer, but it looked kind of slow and there's really little water coming out of the exhaust port when I run it. So, um, right now we switched it up and decided we were no longer going to be anchoring because my theory is that we need a new impeller. Um, so we're now actually drifting downwind, which is good. It's the only, <laughs> only good thing that's happened in the last 24 hours. Um, the wind is blowing us towards the marina that uh, we're going to be uh, getting a transient slip at for tonight. So I'm hoping there's something in the town or somewhere that sells parts. And I'm hoping that they're going to be open late enough for us because uh, right now it's about 3 p.m. And like I said, the sun sets at 5 and we really got to get up and get moving at about 6 a.m. tomorrow. Um, but without the engine, we can't really do that because there's not going to be a whole lot of wind tomorrow anyway. So um, my bet's on a impeller. So that's what I'm hoping for. Sid's down there looking right now for a spare impeller. Um, there were quite a few spare parts. I'm pretty sure I saw a spare impeller at one point um, when we were kind of going through everything um, prior to starting the sale. Um, so I'm hoping, hoping she can find one down there and then if not, then we'll look for an impeller uh, here at the Solomon's Point area. So now we are on part two of engine troubles. So as you uh, just saw, the engine alerted said the cold water was too hot so the water intake uh, engine was overheating so um, luckily we were able to kind of uh, go downwind towards the marina um, dropped our plans for anchoring <laughs> and um, now we're docked at a marina i was able to turn the engine back on after we let it cool down and um, just run it at super low rpms for maybe like a minute or two just so we had maneuverability to get the boat into the uh, uh, transient slip. So now we're looking for the source of the um, lack of uh, raw water. And there's definitely nothing coming out of the exhaust. Um, and I've gone backwards from the exhaust elbow um, up through the, um, I guess it's like the anti-siphon uh, piece up here. Uh, there was nothing in any of that. Of course, there's not gonna be anything in that, but there was nothing in this. Um, and they were kind of dry inside. They, they, they were a little wet at some point, but they didn't seem like, you know, super, super wet. Um, so, you know, we looked through that. So coming from exhaust forward, now I'm going to look mm -hmm. at the, um, impeller down here and see if maybe the impeller itself is shot. We do have, I hope, a spare for this boot that we found on the boat. It is, uh, it does look a little bit old. Either that or honestly, maybe it's just been like sitting somewhere in the boat and it's gotten some corrosion, but it is does have a little bit of corrosion. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that up and I'm hoping that that's what the issue is so that um, we're able to get this impeller in there and get it fixed so we can get moving and get up to Annapolis tomorrow. So fingers crossed. Now this is a really tough shot to get here, but you can see the impeller there is in pieces. So that's definitely the source <laughs> of our problems. And it looks like that's the same one that we have the spare of. So if I zoom out, now the question is how do I get it out? Because it's right next to the starter. There's very little clearance 
There we go. That's actually a much, much better shot, dude. Very little clearance there. So, I gotta figure out how in the world I'm gonna get that out. I tried some, some pliers, but I feel like I'm just getting the edges. Alright, let's see what we got in the toolbox. So there we have our lovely impeller with its family of impeller fins. And if you count the number of fins on the impeller and the number of fins that I have retrieved, you will note that there is one missing. So I think it's got sucked up somewhere into the uh, water cooling system. So I'm gonna try flushing out the system from the exhaust elbow area and hope that it ends up coming out of the uh, impeller housing um, since I have that open right now. I'm hoping that it'll come back through that little hole when I'll be able to, to grab it with some needle nose pliers. So that's kind of where we're at but it's definitely the impeller so we're going to be replacing that impeller there uh, with this one here. And sorry for the lighting, I, I turned off the um, uh, uh, battery for the entire boat just to be safe since there is quite a lot of uh, wires in here and I haven't had a chance to look at them and make sure there's no hot open connection so I didn't want to shock myself. <laughs> so uh, that's why I have the uh, lights turned off right now. But we're going to go fishing and see if we can find this uh, eighth impeller pet, uh, fin. Alright, so as you can see the sun is up which means that we are now on day two. I uh, spent about probably five hours trying to get the old impeller out and then the new impeller back in. Taking the old impeller out was actually really pretty easy. Um, getting the new impeller in was super hard. Uh, the location of it, like you saw on the video camera, I don't know who designed these engines, but they did a horrible job in the placement of a part that needs to be, you know, uh, serviced regularly uh, throughout the year. And so I finally was able to take the, I had to take the entire alternator off just to get to the, to the impeller area, which is right here. And because you just, there isn't enough torque between the starter and then the impeller to really push it in and get it in there. So we had like a rope wrapped around it last night and Sydney was pulling on the rope that I had fed through to try to get it onto the impeller shaft. But that was, um, it didn't work. We spent about probably three hours doing that, trying to get it on. So then took the impeller, or excuse me, took the alternator off and first try went right in um, because you have a whole lot of more access over top to reach in there and grab it with both hands and pull it onto the shaft. So, you know, I guess we learned now when we're changing the that's impeller what shaft. Did. What's that? I said that's what yeah. she did. <laughs> we, so we learned when we're changing the impeller now um, to take the alternator off, um, which is kind of kind of a pain, but it actually wasn't that hard to get off. It was harder to get the old impeller out than it was to take the alternator off. So. Got the uh, new impeller in. We're still missing one of the old impeller fins. So I'm gonna take off the um, rear part of the heat exchanger and hopefully that's where the, uh, what was it, eight Sid? Mm -hmm. Were we missing eight? Yeah, I think it has nine total. So we were missing uh, eight. We found seven and we're looking for the last and final impeller fin. So, I'm going to go ahead and get the impeller housing closed back up, um, sealed, and then I'm going to put the alternator back on, and then we're going to go look for that last impeller fin that is missing. Since trying to get the water strainer back on, we still cannot find the uh, eighth missing impeller blade. We, I mean, from top to bottom have completely disassembled the entire cold water system, um, or excuse me, not cold water system, the uh, raw water cooling system, um, I mean from, from complete top to bottom. So I have the 
heat exchanger open up back here. And apologies, the fans are running for some air circulation, it might be a little bit loud. But uh, you can see that there's the heat, well, too far of a zoom there. A little dark back there, but there's the heat exchanger. It's actually in pretty good condition. Um, there isn't really any corrosion or anything in the tubes, which is good. I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest. But look through all, you know, in the little uh, heat exchanger end cap here. No rubber impeller. Flushed the entire system multiple times now. And I'm not really sure where it's at. Uh, I've checked pretty much every hose that's available. Um, the only other thing I can think of is if it wedged itself down in one of these heat exchanger tubes, which I think would be pretty difficult for it to do because this is what one of the impeller fins looks like and it really does not fit down in there at all. Um, so we're at a loss as to where that eighth one is. Honestly, I'm starting to lean towards it fell out when I was taking the old impeller out since it was dark and it just fell somewhere and we haven't been able to find it. But the good thing is that we completely flushed with high pressure water the intake. So the impeller fin is not in the intake. So I was worried it might be in the intake when I undid the C-strainer and it sucked back reverse as the engine drained itself of raw water. Um, but we, I just flushed that super hard, nothing came out, even took apart the C-strainer, which is why Sid's putting it back together now. This is not going back in. So, that's kind of where we're at. You might have to turn it the opposite direction. It might be righty-lefty or something. It was weird when I was messing around with it earlier. Um, so yeah, so I'm not really too sure where that fin is, but the good thing is it's not in the intake, so it's not. it shouldn't destroy the impeller that I just put in that we were able to get in. If anything, I'm hoping that it's somewhere downstream from the impeller and that um, we'll run it for a bit and then I'm gonna take the got it. heat exchange. You got it? Good. Yeah. I'm gonna take the heat exchange end cap off again and I'm hoping that it's just gonna be sitting in there. <laughs> but who knows, we, we spent quite a while looking for it now. It's it's has been probably a seven to ten hour ordeal at this point. Um, mainly because it's our first time, but also because the location of the impeller is pretty bad, and that was where we spent most of the time trying to get the new impeller back in. So that's kind of where we're at. So I'm going to get this end cap back on, and then make sure all my hoses are good, and then fire up the engine and see if water comes out the exhaust. Well, as you can tell, the repair was successful. What are your thoughts, Captain Sid? I'm very impressed with you, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. And I actually, I actually learned a lot. Yeah. About engines. What'd you learn? What impeller is? Yeah. That they deserve to be in a location that is accessible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we learned that. Um, that's, that's that's true. That we should change ours annually and always keep a spare. Yep. For sure. Yep. Maybe even two, just to be over, overly cautious. Yep. Um, coolant is important. <laughs> it's important. Keeping the engine cool. Keeping the engine cool. Yeah. Making sure there are bubbles or water coming out. Not bubbles. Um, and I actually kind of, even though it's stressful at times, I kind of like it. Yeah. So I'm liking the sailing life. Yeah. You know. Yeah, say, tell the good point you made about how we're under like a time crunch. Oh yeah, so I have a surgery November 11th and Which I is, have... Uh, how many days? Uh, six days. Six, six days. days um, and I have to get COVID tested before it and all that good stuff. So we were trying to get the boat up there before I have to get COVID tested. So we were kind of in a rush, but then we just decided, you know what? If we can't get it up before then, then we can't. I'll just, my parents will pick me up and I'll get COVID tested and then come back and just not, we just won't interact with anyone. She's yeah. leaving me. For like a day, <laughs> not even. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stay on the boat tonight. Um, I'll probably I do have to work tomorrow, so luckily this marina has Wi-Fi, so I'll be I'll be able to remote in because I've been remote anyway since COVID. So I'll be remoting in, um, this working says a little bit. It's shallow here. Yeah, it does. Right. Christ is a burden. <laughs> Sorry about that. We had to cut the footage. Didn't realize there's a uh, super shallow spot out here in Solomon's Island area, and you know we're test testing the motor, and um, I think the there really wide. He's, he's crazy. And uh, we had to take some evasive maneuvers. So yeah, just follow the um, follow us out there. I can't even remember what I was saying. We've got some some wake. I'm not gonna survive the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> even now, I'm like, <laughs> what are we even talking about? I don't even know. Me working? Oh, oh, the plan for you to come back. How do you zoom in on that? Uh, just these. Okay, I like being zoomed so, in. Oh, okay. So I can see like the individual depths. Yeah. So there's that um that blue spot over here was what we were headed towards. I didn't even know there was that existed in here, but. No. I was like, charts, charts are important. I was like, I don't see anything. <laughs> but I guess it's like no one's there. Yeah. Yeah, we sold the depth meter. It went from like, what was it, 20? And it was like ten. 20 down to like, yeah, 10 or uh, 9. And we started getting super worried. But yeah, so the plan is, so Sid's going to go get her COVID test tomorrow. Mm -hmm. She's getting picked up later today. I'm going to work remote. And then the plan is to get the boat off to Annapolis this weekend, so we'll have a little Saturday and Sunday to get it up, yeah. to, get it up to our slip there. You gotta make sure we call the marina. Yeah, that's a good we point. We do that today, because we told them we would be there today. Yeah. And we gotta say it now. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully I'll put, maybe I can put a deposit down Friday. I assume we won't sail up Friday, because we're not gonna have enough time. No, no. Unless yeah, you wanna yeah. go by yourself. No, I'd, li I'd like your help. See where <laughs> it was. It was lucky we had both of us on the boat when we had that impeller fail because Sid maintained control while I went down in trouble shooting the engine. And like I said, luckily we were the, the marina was downwind from us, so we were out kind of near that uh, military-looking base out there. Because there's an anchorage out there, and we were kind of in that area. And luckily the wind was blowing us this way towards the marina so that's how we got into the marina and I unfortunately didn't have to turn the engine on to do some maneuvering once we got in there to get into the slip but it probably was less than 45 seconds or so a minute maybe so that's kind of where we're at so now we're just out here testing the engine like I said I also got the um, uh, outboard motor hoist set up just to get it out of the, the compartment so that's up. We got our nice American flag that Sid was able to repair. Mm -hmm. We have yeah, our yeah. bimini, which I think is backwards. Since I think that window is supposed to go up here, so you can see the see the mast and the sail. So that was a little oopsie, but the living learn. And that's pretty much it. Since Sid's uh, dad's coming to pick her up in about an hour and a half, so. We'll probably just run it a little bit longer out here, test it out, make sure it works well, and then head back in. And then I'm going to be all alone for the rest of the day. And I'll probably just do some cleaning and tidying up since the boat's a mess from disassembling the entire cord system and putting it back together. <laughs> that was fun. 